Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. In this video we're doing the first video on Further Pure 2 FP2 course and it's on sol solving algebraic inequalities. As always for more help with your A level or GCSE do check out the YouTube, Twitter or Google Plus account. So to give us a start this is our first tutorial it's on algebraic inequalities and solving them and it's for the Edexcel Further Pure two course but should be applicable to most other modules. This is what the Edexcel specification says we uh, need to learn. So we are learning about inequalities, chapter one, and we need to be able to manipulate and solve the algebraic inequalities and inequations including those involving the modulus sign. So this is the first example we're going to do today, ones like this. And in the next video, we're going to do ones with the modulus sign, which would be the second video. OK, so let's uh, give this go straight away with an introduction. So we're solving algebraic inequalities and just want to run you through what that means. Here are three algebraic inequalities. X squared is strictly less than 5x plus 6. X multiplied by x plus 1 is bigger than or equal to 6 and 3 divided by x plus 1 is bigger than 2 divided by x. OK, so they're the type of things we're solving. We've got to be very careful here. We are not solving equations. We are solving inequalities. So we've got to be very careful to keep our inequality, whatever it is given in the question, throughout our working. When we solve these, what we're going to do is we're going to use very similar techniques. So we're going to use similar techniques to when solving equations. Um, however, um, at the end, we're not going to get one or two x specific answers. We're going to get a range of x answers. Okay. So to solve these, we are going to, in general, do the following things. We are going to, step one, we're going to um, use algebraic techniques to simplify our algebraic inequality. And by that, I mean the techniques of expanding brackets, adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing both sides of the inequality and factorizing, etc. OK, so they're the typical techniques we're going to use. And at the end, we are going to get a range of x values. In our answer. Okay, so uh, one thing to be very, very careful of with inequalities, and this is I'm going to show you by way of an example. Now, it would be a fair statement to say that 4 is strictly bigger than 1. Okay, so that is definitely a, a, a true statement. 4 is bigger than 1. Now, if like equations I could do the same thing to both sides, say if I decided to multiply both sides by negative 1. OK, that's what I'm going to do to both sides. So I'm going to get negative 4 and I'll get negative 1 on that side. Now, is it true that negative 4 is bigger than negative 1? No, it isn't. This statement here is not true at all. In fact, I need to reverse the inequality sign because negative 4 is strictly less than negative 1. So when I've multiplied here by a negative number, I've had to reverse the inequality sign. And the exact same thing is true if you divide by a negative number. Say we said, again, here's an, another example. Say we said that 4 is less than, let's say, 10, which is a true statement. Say if we div divided both sides by negative 2 because we felt like it, we would get negative uh, 2 here and we would get negative 5 here. However, negative 2 is bigger than negative 5. So, what I was trying to illustrate there is whenever you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number or expression, algebraic expression, then the inequality sign must be reversed, must be reversed. Now this is going to come up in example two and three where 
we're going to avoid that situation by doing something else. So let's go straight into three examples for this topic. Okay, so here we go. We're going to solve 2x squared is less than x plus 3. Now we're going to uh, firstly um, bring uh, everything to one side of the inequality sign. So what we're going to do from both sides, we're going to subtract an x and we're going to subtract a 3. So we would get that 2x squared subtract x subtract 3 is less than 0. And then we're going to factorise. So I'm going to write each step that I'm doing to help you here. We're factorising this. So in one bracket, you'd certainly have a 2x. And in another bracket, um, you'd certainly have an x. And you would have a negative 3 here. And you would have a plus 1 here. That would be the correct factorisation of that. Now, you should remember from your earlier work in core 1 and core 2, when you've got a quadratic inequality or any inequality, uh, a polynomial inequality, to solve it, to find the correct range of x's, you must draw the graph. Okay, so we're going to draw a quick sketch of this graph here. Now, it's a positive x squared graph. Okay, so, and we know that it has roots at negative 1, here's a root at negative 1 here, and also a root at 3 over 2, which is 1.5. Okay, or I'll leave that as 3 over 2, actually, it's just neater if I leave that as 3 over 2. So they're the roots. And I'm going to draw the graph, and it's positive, so it's a U-shaped graph, it looks something like that. Now we're looking for where this graph is less than 0, and clearly the graph is less than 0 in this region here. So the solution for this uh, inequality here is that x must be between 3 over 2, and negative 1. That there is clearly your solution for this equation, uh, for this inequality even, and we have a range of x, any x that is bigger than negative 1 but strictly less than 3 over 2. And we're done with example 1. Now moving on to example 2, we're asked to solve another inequality. x squared divided by x subtract 2 is less than x plus 1. It tells us x can't be 2 because otherwise and the denominator on the left hand side would be 0 and we can't divide by 0. Now, if this was simply an equation, if that was an equal sign here instead of an inequality, we'd multiply both sides by x subtract 2, collect like terms and solve a quadratic. However, it isn't um, uh, as simple as that in this case because x subtract 2, for all we know, x subtract 2 could be a negative number, in which case we'd have to swap the inequalities around. Okay, so if, like, let, let's say, x was less than 2, x subtract 2 is clearly a negative number. Okay, so we have to be a bit more cunning about how we solve these. And so instead of multiplying both sides of the, equa of the inequality by x subtract 2, we're going to multiply both sides by x subtract 2 squared, because we know that certainly is a positive number, it's a square number. So let's do that. What would we get on the left-hand side? We would get x squared, x subtract 2, is less than x plus 1, x subtract 2, all squared. Now it's important here not to just uh, willy-nilly go ahead and expand the brackets here. So I'm going to write this in bold. Do not expand brackets at this stage you are creating extra work for yourself. Instead, subtract, um, let's say, the right-hand side from both sides. Subtract x plus 1, x subtract 2, all squared from both sides. So we would get x squared, x subtract 2, subtract x plus 1, x subtract 2, all squared is less than 0. Okay, so I always want you to do that in this stage. Now, in this stage, we can factorise here because there is a factor of x subtract 2 in both these elements, which makes our work a lot easier. So, factorise out an x subtract 2. What do we have here? We have an x squared left here, and we've got subtract x plus 1, and we've got one of the x subtract 2's left is less than 0. And that has made our work a hell of a lot easier. So keep the x subtracted to there. 
what would the inside of this bracket be? Well, it'd be x squared, subtract whatever we get when we expand this, which is x squared, subtract x, subtract 2. So inside the bracket we have x, subtract 2, and if we do this, x squared, take away x squared is nothing, uh, subtract negative x is going to be plus x, and subtract negative 2 is going to be plus 2, and we have that less than 0. So there's the quadratic we have. We have it in factorised form. We can't solve that until we draw a graph. Now it has a, this quadratic here um, ha, is a positive quadratic, and if it was equal to zero, it would have roots at two and so negative two and two, and it would be a U-shaped graph. something like that, and we want the graph where it is less than zero, so we want this region here. So clearly the answer to this problem, therefore, is that x must be less than two and is bigger than negative two, and that is our answer. So we're done. Okay, last example now, keeping everything we've learned in mind, bearing all uh, everything we've got from example two in mind. We want to solve this inequality here, um, now, if this was an equation, as I said before, we'd multiply both sides by x plus 1 and both sides by x plus 3, collect like terms, and solve a quadratic. Not so easy in this case, because x plus 1 and x plus 3 could actually be negative. So we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared, and we're going to multiply both sides by x plus 3 squared. So if we did that, on the left-hand side we would get an x, we get an x plus 1, and we get x plus 3 squared it is less than or equal to the 2. We'd have an x plus 3, and we'd have an x plus 1 squared. Now, as I said before, make sure you do not factorize, okay, because you will create extra work for yourself. Instead, subtract the right-hand side off both sides of the inequality. Doing so, we would get x, x plus 1, x plus 3, all squared. Subtract 2, x plus 3, x plus 1, all squared, is less than or equal to 0. Now we can factorise. This is the key thing that saves us a hell of a lot of work. If we factorise here, well, we have a factor of x plus 3, uh, sorry, of, of x plus 1 in both of the expressions. So we can factorise out an x plus 1, certainly. We could also factorise out an x plus 3, because we also have that in both expressions. So we're going to factorise out an x plus 3. And what would we be left with? Well, we'd be left with 1x and an x plus 3 here. Subtract 2 and an x plus 1 here. Now all we've got to do is tidy this up here. So we have an x plus 1 x plus 3, and uh, in the brackets we're going to have an x squared uh, plus 3x, subtract 2x, subtract 2. We're nearly there now, just a bit more tidying up. So we're going to have an x plus 1, an x plus 3, we're going to have an x squared plus x, subtract 2, less than or equal to 0, and last stage, factorise the third term, we would have an x uh, plus 2 and an x subtract 1 less than or equal to 0. Okay, so we have fully factorised it. In order to solve, we're going to uh, draw a graph. So we've got four, uh, four brackets with a positive x in it. So this is a quartic, so it's a positive x to the power of 4 graph. Let's just roughly think what that looks like and then use our knowledge of the factorised form. We know that when x tends to infinity, x to the power of 4 certainly tends to infinity. So as x tends to infinity, the y, or the graph, would tend to infinity, so it goes off up here. As x tends to negative infinity, because a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative is actually positive, again, the y value will tend to positive infinity. So we know it, it starts off up here and it ends up up here. We also know it has roots at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 and 1. So it has roots at negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 and at 1. 
Now it's just a case of drawing the thing in. So the graph will look, it will come down here and cross at negative three, go back up and cross at negative two, come back down and cross at negative one, and then finally go off up there to infinity. It looks something like that. And the regions we're looking for, we're clearly looking for when it's less than or equal to zero, and these are the key points in here. So, one would think, therefore, that the answers must therefore be these two regions, namely x is bigger than or equal to negative 2 and bigger than or equal to negative 3, or x is less than or equal to 1 and bigger than or equal to negative 1. We would think they're the answers. However, one thing we must bear in mind, we're told in the original question, you must think about this at the very end, x can't be negative 1 and x can't be negative 3. We are told that as a fact, so therefore x cannot be, is not bigger than or equal to negative 3, is strictly bigger than negative 3, and x is not bigger than or equal to negative 1, is strictly bigger than negative 1. So you must think to do that at the end, otherwise you'll drop a mark. And that's it for this particular set of examples. To consolidate this work, there's a lot of questions to do. Read chapters 1 on the FP2 book, pages 1 to 4, um, and make sure you do exercise 1A, all of those questions to get your skills to the right level. Then watch the next video. Thank you very much for watching.